Hello, my name is Rodney Robinson, and I'm going to talk today about the subject of radionics, or radionic healing. And this is really aimed at those members of my group, Pendulum Dowsing and Energy Balancing, who have asked, what is radionics? The short answer is, it's a distant healing method which uses a tuned circuit and a witness to link to the subject who you're sending subtle energies to for the purposes of healing. It is related to dowsing because what you do is you, you use a, a pendulum to tune a circuit by means of variable resistors to a particular frequency and these frequencies are called rates. They're not frequencies in the standard scientific way we think of frequencies because we're dealing with subtle energy but the settings on the instrument called rates or radionic rates are representations of what you're tuning into very similar to the way that we tune a pendulum by utilizing the length of the cord so when, when we use a pendulum over a particular uh, object we can change the length of the cord and where the cord is held at, the pendulum will be tuned to. So you can either use that for detection or transmission of a subtle frequency. So it is very, very relevant to dowsers, and especially people who use dowsing in any way for, for healing purposes. So uh, radionics, what is a radionic circuit? Well, I have one available to show you somewhere. I put it down. Here it is. It's a little mini circuit and all it really is is a, a, a series of variable resistors which are tunable and two portions of the circuit usually in, the, in, in terms of a coil or a, a plate, a metallic plate and this is used to place the witness of the person who is to be receiving the uh, radionic healing or the radionic balancing, I don't know what to call it. And there is a space on there, they usually turn an input and an output. So you place the, uh, the, the radionic witness of the individual. Now this can be anything that links to that person. Usually a little lock of hair is used, it can be a spot of blood or saliva on a, uh, a piece of white blotting paper. Or it can be um, a, a small photograph. Uh, anything that has the energetic imprint of the, the individual. And what you want to be doing with your radionic circuit is to tune the circuit to the individual. Now some uh, radionic instruments, they, they've increased in their complexity and their design over the years uh, and they you, you get auto-tuning instruments but basically this is what happens. You hold your, your pendulum over a portion of the circuit and as you turn the variable resistor the pendulum will respond at some point along the scale of that dial and give you a tuned response, um, a circular response. And so you actually end up, if you did this on all three of these, you would end up with a, a series of figures, let's say one, two, three. And that would be the radionic rate of the witness that you're, you're working on. And then what you can do is you can place, according to the design of the circuit, you can place homeopathic or flower essences or crystals or whatever you feel can be tuned in a balancing way to that that person again you would test it with your pendulum uh, by placing the remedy this is a homeopathic remedy on there and you would see what the response was from your pendulum and radionic circuits tend to amplify energy so even if you're a non-dowser uh, you may find that with a radionic device you're more likely to be able to get a dowsing response from your pendulum. So that in very 
brief term, this is how a radionic treatment is set up. You may ask, why is it not powered? Well, it doesn't have to be powered by anything really, because there is always movement of electrons through a coiled circuit, through an open circuit, or you know this one has various coils in it. It's also designed, this particular one, to be plugged in to another circuit called a Rife frequency circuit. And Rife frequencies were designed on a Hertzian level, so they are actual frequencies, pulses per second, which can be placed through the device in order to get the, to obtain the benefit of the Rife frequencies as well as the subtle frequencies set by the radionic rates. Because I should say that there are radionic rates for different things. You can set the rates for remedies, each one has a, a string of numbers. It can be to balance disease, to balance organs, chakras, anything that you can think of. There are colour rates, so that you can send colour energy to the individual by turning the, the dials to the appropriate setting or radionic rate. And that's it. But if you want to go further into radionics and look at its uh, wider complexity, because I've only just literally scratched the surface of this subject. It's a very big subject. And there's a book that I would recommend to you called sorry, The Secret Art, which is all about radionics, its principles, how it was devised, the people involved in uh, inventing various instruments and how they were used. It discusses the principles in some depth as well. I think that no talk or presentation on radionics should omit the history going back to its inventor, Albert Abrahams, who was a doctor and scientist who was born in 1863 and was um, really a, an orthodox doctor who had an inquiring mind. And he discovered that when he was doing palpations, diagnostic palpations of patients' abdomens, that if a uh, diseased substance was brought into their, their biofield, the reflexes on the abdomen would change. They would change in um, their, their force, and in their location on the abdomen. So he actually did a lot of research and, fa and found an, a map, really, of the abdomen. So he mapped out the abdomen, where the reflexes were, when different substances, such as bacteria cultures, cultures of cancerous tissue, etc., were brought into the biofield, and where the, the reflex, the associated reflex, would occur on the abdomen. I always find it very ironic that uh, such an orthodox doctor working in the field of medicine would invent radionics, which is now considered the most alternative of alternative approaches. So uh, it's, quite, it's really quite interesting. Um, in the book, you, there is uh, Albert Abrahams there with one of his devices. And I just want to show you this picture on this side, which I think uh, sums up quite nicely what he discovered. He discovered that the substance could be replaced by a circuit of dials. So there's the little figure there of the patient connected one electrode to the forehead, one to the feet. And in between there are a series of dials. He called this a refle his reflexophone. And uh, it was used to basically create uh, reflexes on the abdomen when certain settings were placed on the reflexophone. So he devised a set of what we now term radionic rates for his reflexophone, which we could th he could then use diagnostically to see if it uh, actually produced uh, a particular reflex in the person. And by tuning these reflexes, by tuning the, 
the circuit to the reflexes. He could de he developed in, in a way a diagnostic system. Others then went on to develop the system of radionics as we know it, but the principle was there, and, you know, in, in its basic form. And if you read the book, you will see how such an eminent doctor in his field and an eminent scientist was absolutely ostracised by everyone in both fields of science and medicine. And he was ridiculed and literally uh, lost his reputation, in fact. Um, and you can read the story of basically what he went through. And subsequently, what people went through who tried to take up his work. It really is a, a, a story in itself. So I'd refer you to uh, have a, uh, an interesting read. It says something about um, human nature, I think, as well, when you read that story. And how sick it actually is and how in need of healing, um, you know, human consciousness really is. So I hope that has helped anybody who really didn't have a clue what radionics was or is. There are a lot of radionic practitioners who use this. In some countries it's, it's made illegal. I think in America you can practice it just on yourself and privately, but you can't become a practitioner of radionics. In England it's more liberal, you can, you can do that. It's illegal to make claims for radionics, however, so you must say that it's an energy balancing method. It's not a cure for anything. So uh, the other thing that I would like to say, <coughs> excuse me, is that one thing you have to bear in mind if you're going to use radionics is that when you tune the radionic circuit to a witness, you are bringing your own biofield uh, in contact with the biofield of the witness. So there are risks in radionics to yourself. And I found this when I <clears throat> first started using radionics, excuse me again, <clears throat> that after uh, a while I realised that uh, just after doing some radionic healing on somebody, you know, particularly if the radionic healing appeared to be very successful, I would actually get a, a very mild feeling of the person's symptoms. It didn't bother me, it was just a mild sense of them, it was very mild and it only lasted a short time and then went. But it proved to me that their, that information in their biofield was actually communicating with mine and having an effect on me. Not a permanent effect, but you know, you can see that there are dangers inherent in this. And it's very important to do a lot of protective work on your own auric field, making sure that you are, yourself are very healthy and fit, um, that your energy uh, centers such as your chakras are well balanced. So you really do need to do a lot of work on yourself if you're going to go into the field of, of radionics. Um, just something to mention. It's something that we all need to do, actually, if we're using any kind of metaphysical technique. Using the pendulum, for example, we still need to do protective measures before we start a session. Uh, and that can be you know, prayer, visualisation, meditation, pendulum commands. There are a range of things that you can do to protect your energy field, and that's always... Uh, highly recommended. So I hope this has been helpful, useful, interesting, uh, and please make comments or ask questions as you feel fit. Thank you for watching.